So with hopes of a Fed hike into September dwindling by the day and the dollar weakening on the news, it seems we may finally have some upside for the ringgit. We spoke with FXTM's chief market analyst Jamil Ahmad to get his view on the local currency. While this current trade in week has been a much more positive week for the emerging currencies and even the Malaysian ringgit as well, it's recovered its losses from the uh, previous trade in week. Um, to be honest with you guys, the dollar itself has slipped on another banana skin. Um, there's no confidence in the Federal Reserve interest rate expectations. The markets also feel that there's no real conviction from the Federal Reserve when it comes to pointing out when exactly they could raise US interest rates. And as a result of a lack of confidence, a lack of conviction, the markets are pushing back US interest rate expectations once again. This is providing the investor attraction towards the emerging markets this week. Um, as we enter September today, there's only like a 22 or 23 percent chance of an interest rate rise in September from the US against like 42 percent just one week or two weeks ago. So basically, yes, as the um, U.S. interest rate expectations continue to get pushed back, it will provide some upside momentum for the Malaysian ringgit. And we're already looking forward towards the possibility that at the moment, the markets think if they're going to move in 2016, they will move in December, uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve. However, we've seen interest rate expectations get pushed back time and time again. And we do believe that if U.S. interest rate expectations get pushed back even further than December, this will provide the momentum for the ringgit to move a little bit higher across the dollar. So it feels a little bit like deja vu, but as you so poetically put it, the dollar slipping on a banana skin here. But how much of an upside potential does that give the ringgit? Or are we going to see gains capped? And if so, what would be the event risk that would do so? Um, I believe at the present time, the low for the Malaysian ringgit is about 4.10 against the dollar, where towards the upside, you're looking between 3.95 and 3.90 as stubborn resistance. If the dollar really does slip on a very long banana skin and gets widely sold due to expectations getting pushed back even further towards maybe April um, 2017, this would provide the upside potential for the Malaysian currency to move back uh, consistently below four against the dollar. But at the moment, markets still think it's possible that December will be the time for a rate rise. I remain unconvinced if I'm being honest with you. However, at the moment, this is what the markets are looking forward towards. Um, dollars pretty much contributing towards the major action of the emerging market currencies. But I would look at domestic um, risks as well, such as maybe central bank policy from the Bank Nagara how the Malaysian economy is performing, and this might also um, encourage some action for the local currency. All right, so markets still need more convincing about what the Fed may do, but in this current context then, of course, there's that uh, chase for yield. Uh, we're seeing foreign ownership of Malaysia debt, for example, rise. Um, how much of a conviction does this uh, chase for uh, yield have when it comes to the emerging space, in particular uh, Malaysian assets? Well, investors are still ch chasing higher yield and they're looking wherever they can to find it. And when the mature central banks such as in Europe, Japan, even the Bank of England are easing monetary policy, Reserve Bank of Australia, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, their policy is a little bit more unchanged now, but they eased policy early in the year. So the emerging markets still offer far higher uh, interest rates than the mature economies. And you have to look where investors can exactly place their money now if they are looking for yield. You have gold. This has potential. The recent rally in the equity markets and major stock markets it hasn't been backed by economics or fundamental confidence in these economies. So when you look for yield, the emerging market still has quite a, I would say, quite a high attraction just due to the interest rates and their policies being far higher than what you see on the major central banks. Now, Jamil, how much stock are you putting in these uh, potential informal talks uh, coming to some sort of output freeze, what that might mean for oil markets, and therefore currencies like the ringgit that are relying in some way on commodities? Sure. Well, I'm still trying to work out what exactly is an informal meeting that's supposed to occur with OPEC later this month. But what we're seeing is the running story again. There's a huge oversupply in the market and economic confidence when it comes to the global economy is still low. So this means this oversupply and lower demand for oil is going to keep prices pressured. What I do think that's going to happen is that OPEC members will announce an intention or some confidence towards a freeze or production cut at a later stage. 
but only if this is also supportive from no, non-OPEC members. And this is where the catch-22 scenario begins because it's going to be very difficult for, to congregate between non-OPEC and OPEC members to agree on what production level is going to take place for oil. But yes, any positive moves for the oil markets, and we still think $50 is the major level for US crude, would be supportive towards the EM currencies as a result, positive for the Malaysian bring it. However, any profit taken, and we still think the risks are a little bit more skewed towards a downside for the oil markets, this can then um, weaken investor attraction towards risky assets. As a result, the Malaysian ringgit could find itself under pressure.